Engines of Sodor's Past Written and told by Kiefer Adams Edward the Blue Engine was resting in the yards near Tidmouth. He was waiting for the Fat Controller to return from Brighton, as he had acquired a new tank engine requested by his father, the previous controller, Sir Charles Topham Hatt. Edward was just wondering what engine had been brought when an excited whistle echoed in the distance. Right before Edward's eyes, an E2-class tank engine pulled into the yard with the fat controller on board its cab. The engine had six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler and a short stumpy dome. The engine stopped next to Edward and the fat controller climbed down. Edward, he announced, this is London, Brighton and South Coast Railways number 70, but I have named him Thomas. Please make him feel welcome. Yes, sir, said Edward. The fat controller then walked away to make inspections of the yard. Thomas was excited. Welcome to the island of Sodor, said Edward politely. Did you enjoy your trip? It was wonderful, said Thomas. Your controller was telling me all about the line. So, what are we going to do? Are we going to shunt trucks? Are we going to pull some coaches? Go out on the main line? Slow down, laughed Edward. You've only just got here. We'll start small first, and then build our way up. Thomas was disappointed that he wouldn't get to do much. But he trusted Edward, and the old engine showed him around the North Western Railway. In the weeks that followed, Thomas was soon given a blue coat with red stripes, and his number 70 was swapped out for a number one, as requested by Sir Charles Topham Hatt himself. Thomas worked hard, and Edward showed him what needed to be done. But Gordon and Henry still had their doubts. You would have thought the fat controller would have gone for something bigger, grunted Gordon one night. Indeed, agreed Henry. I know Sir Charles wanted a tank engine, but I didn't think he wanted one this small. I'm still hard working, protested Thomas. That, said Gordon, is an understatement. We wanted something more reliable, responsible, added Henry. And really useful, Gordon finished. All right, you two, said Edward from the corner of the shed. That's enough. I'm just as hard-working as you, thundered Thomas. At least I don't sit in the station wailing for my trucks and coaches. You will watch your tongue around us, snapped Gordon. I said that's enough, said Edward. Look, we all have a busy day tomorrow. Can we please get some rest? There were some reluctant grunts and groans from Gordon and Henry. Soon the sheds were silent as Henry, Edward, Thomas and Gordon were fast asleep. The next morning, Gordon and Henry had already left Tidmouth sheds. Henry had his fish train, the Flying Kipper, to take, while Gordon had the express. Edward was being fired up, ready for the day's work, when he noticed Thomas looking ashamed in the corner of the shed. Are you all right? asked Edward. I thought you'd be quite happy to start another day's worth of work. Thomas looked solemn-faced. I'm going to be in trouble, aren't I? he asked. Whatever for? chuckled Edward. Thomas explained. Oh, don't listen to the big engine, said Edward. I know you're working hard, and so does the fat controller. You wait and see. Thomas sighed. Edward, you've been so kind and supportive to me, he said. Did you ever have any engines to support you when you first arrived? Edward was surprised. No one had asked him this before, but he smiled. As a matter of fact, Thomas, yes, he replied. There were two engines I remember fondly. They were still on the line when I first arrived from the Furnace Railway. Please tell me about them, said Thomas. I think we got time, smiled Edward. I'll start with Bloomer. Bloomer, Edward continued, was a very smart red tender engine. He had a large central driving wheel and he was very proud. 
His coat of red paint was what the workmen called fire engine red. You see those coaches over there, he added, looking over to the yard. Oh yes, said Thomas, the rake of free. That's right, said Edward. They were originally bloomers. When he left the island, he let Sir Charles keep them, so that engines such as myself and Henry can take them on our suburban trains. That was nice of him, said Thomas. I'll never forget what Bloomer said when he left the railway, said Edward. I had just emerged from the works, painted in the colours you see me in today. Bloomer was going to work on a heritage line. He puffed up to me, and I'll never forget what he said. Edward, Bloomer said, I want you to know that I'm very proud of what you've done for this railway. You've become a far greater engine than I could ever hope to be. Please make the Fet Directors Railway proud, and give credit to it. Bloomer then puffed away to his new home. And ever since, said Edward, I have always carried Bloomer's promise. Thomas was impressed. Who was the other engine? he asked. The other engine was Ernest, said Edward. He was a little younger than Bloomer, but just as hard working. When the camera was first invented, Ernest wanted to be the first engine to have his photo taken. Imagine it all over the houses across the island, he would brag. But I'm pleased to say that Ernest got something a lot better than a photograph. He actually had his portrait painted by a famous artist. How wonderful, said Thomas. Indeed, said Edward. Ernest had a big smile on his face for a week after that. I think the Fat Controller has a portrait of Ernest in his mansion. His wife gladly picked it out. Thomas beamed. Ernest was a very good working engine, said Edward. But he now lives at a museum. The museum directors who brought him often come to Sodor to tell us how he's getting on. They say he runs a small demonstration line and is happy to just settle down and rest. That's good, said Thomas. Then he noticed the fat controller in the yard, signalling the two engines to come and see him. Oh dear, Thomas gulped. Don't worry, whispered Edward, you'll be fine. And the two engines prepared to leave the shed. Thomas and Edward soon found themselves face to face with the fat controller. Good morning, sir. Thomas stammered. If it's about what I said to Gordon and Henry last night, sir, I'm really sorry, sir. The fat controller raised his hand. Thomas, he said, I'm not cross with you. I heard plenty of complaints this morning from the passengers. It seems Gordon and Henry have tried to give you a run for their money, but have failed miserably. I'll be speaking to them later. Thomas was pleased. I'm actually proud of the work you've done so far, said the fat controller. Thomas, I am appointing you to be pilot of the big station. Would you like that? Oh, yes, sir. Please, sir, whistled Thomas. I'm sure Edward will teach you everything there is to know, said the fat controller. Now run along, please, and prepare Edward's goods. Thomas darted away, excited and relieved. The fat controller then turned to Edward. I've just acquired a mogul tender engine from Lancashire to help you with the goods, he said. He'll be here in a few weeks. Until then, can you manage? Oh, yes, sir, replied Edward. The fat controller beamed. He turned to go back to his car, but then looked back to Edward. Thank you for telling Thomas about Ernest and Bloomer, he said. It was so nice hearing about them again. I heard the stories from my father. Edward smiled. You're welcome, sir, he said, and he puffed away. <laughs>